Hello everyone, I'm your host Kaylee Huatari. <clears throat> Welcome to another episode of Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright. Today we are going to <clears throat> continue with the trial from Rise from the Ashes, Case 5, doing the second day of trial and the first part of this day of the trial. Since in this case it's split up into two parts each for each trial day. <clears throat> anyway, let's get started. February 24th, 9.41 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. So, what do you think, Mr. Wright? <clears throat> I think the prosecution is as confused as we are. After all... The victim was murdered in two different places at the same time. And a different suspect was arrested at the other crime scene. Lana! Good morning, Mr. Wright. I apologize for yesterday. I was indisposed. I hope they didn't hold you too long for questioning. We just finished, actually. I'm used to all-nighters, though. So, how'd it go? Just as Mr. Wright suspects, the police are clueless. I figured as much, so I struck a plea bargain. Plea bargain? What do you mean by that? <clears throat> we agreed that if I told them the truth, behind the simultaneous murder. They wouldn't seek capital punishment. That's what I mean, Emma. But, Lana, don't tell me you. <clears throat> much to my regret. I'm as much in the dark about this as they are. In the sky. Hmm? We discovered traces left by a certain person in the police department evidence room. They belong to Officer Jake Marshall. <clears throat> we found Officer Marshall's traces. Bloodstained fingerprints to be exact. That's the trump card I have up my sleeve today. You do understand what this means, don't you? In order to defend my sister, you're going to accuse Mr. Marshall? We have to play the cards we're dealt, isn't that right? Do what you have to do, Mr. Wright. Looks like Lana's on board with our plans. February 24th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number f uh, 9. <clears throat> Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is. Hmm. Hmm. I'm afraid you'll have to clarify. It takes 30 minutes by car to reach criminal affairs from the prosecutor's office. The victim, Bruce Goodman, <clears throat> was slain in both places at the same time. But that's not physically possible, is it? What's more, I hear the victim from the evidence room just disappeared. Yes, and the body eventually disappeared in the... reappeared in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. Wow, this is one messed up trial. <clears throat> One of my duties as prosecutor is to present impartial evidence. Today I will present evidence related to the murder at the police department. In so doing, I believe the way in which we should proceed will reveal itself. <clears throat> now that's what sets Mr. Edgeworth apart. He sounds so on top of things. 
even though he doesn't know what's going on himself. And that's supposed to be an admirable trait. Very well. Let the trial resume. On the day of the crime, what exactly transpired at the police department? Mr. Edgeworth, you may call your first witness of the day to the stand. <clears throat> For its first witness, the prosecution calls the suspect of the murder that occurred at the police department. The suspect? You mean the so-called murderer? Oh boy. Things are getting wild from the get-go. Will the witness please state his name and occupation? Yes, sir! I'm Officer Mike Meegan, sir! My occupation is, um, that would be murderer, sir! <coughs> <coughs> er, so you're telling us you're a professional killer? Sir, it was me, sir! I'm the one who did it! I'll never kill anyone again, sir! You've got to believe me, sir! <coughs> uh, actually, we like to know... <coughs> Sir, I'm what you would call part of the younger generation, sir. A person whose actions adults can't possibly comprehend. Please, Mr. Edgeworth. Sir, help me, sir. Officer Meekins. Y yes, sir. Give us your report of the crime. Consider that in order. Yes, sir! As you wish! <clears throat> After all, I am part of a generation that must be told what to do, sir! You can't fault him for a lack of enthusiasm. Crime report. Although it's not my normal duty, I was assigned to guard the evidence room that day. I spotted a suspicious man on the security screen, and rushed into the room. <clears throat> I was only doing what I was trained to do, sir. I was suddenly attacked. I fought for my life, then I, I did it. After that, I passed out, until another officer smacked me awake. Hmm. <clears throat> so the victim... <clears throat> Ah, excuse me. So victim Detective Goodman attacked you? Do unto others before they are due unto you! That's the Meekins family motto, sir! I see. Then you fainted and a colleague helped you regain consciousness. Yes, sir! He knocked me upside the head, sir! Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. What I need here is more info to work with. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so I need to press him. Um, start here. Please tell me exact tell us exactly what happened to you. <clears throat> that was a knife, sir. A knife! Detective Goodman pulled a knife on you? What happened then? Well, with me charging in on him and like that, he looked as surprised as I was. He weren't exactly the kind of person someone would want to run into. That's when I reacted, sir. I saw my arms like an octopus, struggling to detain him. That's how I got this gash on my hand. Maybe if you just kept your cool, your hand wouldn't be... <clears throat> That's 
saw the blood trickling down my arm, I panicked. I grabbed the man by his collar. <clears throat> what exactly do you mean when you say you did it? I know I don't look the type, but I'm really into kung fu. Films, sir. <clears throat> the man let his guard down for just an instant, so I snatched his knife from him. You took his knife? <clears throat> I spun him around and performed a disarming maneuver. I made sure to close my eyes like a man. I, uh, see. He must have been desperate. The next thing I knew, his white coat was drenched in a sea of my blood, and then... Then the next thing I knew... Yes? He punched me right in my face, sir! Doing what I wanted to. There we go. <clears throat> well, what time did you regain consciousness? No offense, sir, but how am I supposed to know that? I wasn't conscious. Oh, right. According to the report from the officer that woke up the witness, it was about 5:30. He hit me right in the head, too! I woke up crying tears of pain! That's nice, or I mean, it's nice that you recovered, that is. When I came around, though, I made sure to f finish my mission, sir! <coughs> Your mission? Yes, sir, the blue badger, sir! I returned to the entrance before things got out of hand. Well, we can all rest easy now. This is what he was telling us yesterday. Well, we need to try and skim some more details from him, for starters. What was an officer from the General Affairs Department doing in there in the first place? <clears throat> right, let's press him for all he's worth. We'll start back at the first statement. Mr. Meekins, you're in the General Affairs Department. Do you not? Yes, sir! <clears throat> I am in charge of hiring new recruits, sir! <clears throat> Yikes. Now there's a scary thought. Evidence transferal was taking place on the day of the crime. Which means many officers were given special tasks not ordinarily performed. I was in charge of guarding the blue badger, sir. The blue badger. <clears throat> yes, sir. The lovely police mascot created by the head detective, sir. Uh, I do not like this badger. I was to ensure it wasn't broken during the transferal process. That was my sole mission for the day, sir. <clears throat> I see. Sounds like a very, uh, important mission. After the award ceremony finished that day, there were so many people running around. <clears throat> that I relocated the blue badger to the evidence room. Oh, so that's why you went to the evidence room. Tell us, what did you see when you got there? In order to enter the evidence room, <clears throat> you need an ID card, am I correct? Precisely, sir. I have one right here around my neck. So then, your ID number should be listed in here, right? There it is! I found it! This is the one right here! Could you please read us the number? 
Yes, sir. It's 4989596. That's my number, sir. <clears throat> I see. Huh? But the number 4989596. is shown as being used twice. Please explain, witness. It's no real mystery, sir. The first time is when I relocated Blue Badger to the evidence room. And the second time is when I went to go get him after everything settled down. <clears throat> I see. So it was during that second time when... Yes, sir. That was when I spotted the man on the security screen. Data added to ID card record. And that's the end of this uh, cross-examination. I believe we now have a fairly accurate picture of what happened. Yes, Your Honor, only one thing remains unclear. Was the man this officer murdered really the victim? He's got a point. <clears throat> um. Yes, Officer Meekins? With regard to that, sir. Take a look at this. It was sent to my cell. Chief gone to delivered it to me just this morning, sir. The chief. Delivered it? Oh, not the videotape. I hate this videotape. It's so hard for me to use. What is that, a videotape? <clears throat> Yes, sir. That's absolutely right, sir. Videotape, sir. It contains footage from the security camera in the evidence room. Objection. What? But I specifically asked if there was such a tape. And was told it had been mistakenly erased. That's quite a mistake. I just do what I'm told, sir. It's the only thing I'm really good at. <clears throat> Looks like communication with the police department is as good as ever. Well then, let's have a look. Show us the video of you murdering the victim. I'm going to do a quick save here because I am very bad with this video, usually. <laughs> I have an idea of where I need to, like, present on it, though, so I'll be right back. Alright, and we're back. Oh, please stop using that word murder, sir. It scares me. <clears throat> a video of a real murder? Just what are we getting ourselves into? to analyze after we're done watching it. We have Detective Goodman opening his locker. You can see Meekin fighting him. His locker's still open. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, let's see video. Well, I believe we're all thinking the same thing. <clears throat> How can we deal with these unsettling feelings stirring within us? What the hell was that wriggling piece of plywood? Sir, that is the pride and joy of the entire criminal affairs department, sir! It's the Blue Badger, sir! <clears throat> Why am I not surprised this isn't going smoothly? Security video added to the record. Yes, well, anyway... The tape seems to prove that... that the witness did indeed encounter er, someone in the evidence room and... <clears throat> some sort of... Your Honor, instead of relying on clearly incomplete footage, the witness's testimony will suffice. 
Is that all right with you, Officer Meekins? Yes, sir! As you wish, sir! <clears throat> okay, I guess I don't have to analyze the video just yet. Mystery man. His face can't be clearly seen in the video! But there's no question that the other person was Detective Goodman, sir! I mean, he opened the locker, which required Detective Goodman's fingerprints to do! The locker he opened is un... <clears throat> Questionably Detective Goodman's locker, sir! So it must be him. No one else could have opened... unlocked it! <clears throat> What's this about a fingerprint? Each detective has been given a locker equipped with a fingerprint activated lock. These locks ensure that each locker can only be opened by the detective it belongs to. Intriguing. That would mean... The victim at the crime scene would have to have been Detective Goodman. Very well, the defense may begin its cross-examination. I don't know where this cross-examination will lead. But everything begins with contradictions. That's where I have to start. Lockers. Is there no other way to open them? No, sir. I myself tried all kinds of methods in the past. <clears throat> they only respond to registered fingerprints, sir. I wonder what kind of methods he's tried. If the man opened the locker, it's lock, which only responds to its required fingerprint, registered fingerprints. <clears throat> And he must be the person the locker was assigned to. Exactly my point, sir! And this, too! That keeps opening that on me. Why aren't you doing that? <clears throat> How do you know that information? I've heard rumors! From people uh, in the know, sir! People in the know? The workers in the department... Cafeteria, sir! They keep me informed! They also listen to my... Romantic troubles, sir! <clears throat> For the record... The open locker did indeed belong to Detective Goodman. I verified this information through a more reliable source. <clears throat> so the victim opened the locker with his own fingerprint. However, the most important detail is not shown in this video. The man's face. So, sir! If I may say something, sir! <clears throat> Please do, after all, you are the one being examined. I don't understand why the man's face is so important in this case, sir. I mean, it was his hand that opened the fingerprint lock. And it was his hand that tried to thrust the knife into my body, sir. My unsettled state can testify enough to this, sir. Yes, you have a point. The footage doesn't lie. That is... <clears throat> Unless the defense can find a problem with it. Mr. Wright, let's check the court record again. <clears throat> is there a problem with the security video? Yes. Yes, there is. There's a problem. Regarding the video contained on the tape, there is one thing in particular that seems rather strange. 
strange. This contradiction leads to the possibility that... The man may not be Detective Goodman. What? This video contains such a contradiction? <clears throat> Interesting. Your Honor, I have a proposal. Yes, Mr. Edward? I propose we have the defense point out to us this alleged contradiction in the video. He would want me to point it out, wouldn't he? Very well, proposal accepted. Let us further inspect this piece of evidence. <clears throat> I will now play the security tape. Mr. Wright, please show us the contradiction you speak of. I have to point out a problem in the video? This is the first time I've ever had to do that. You can do it, Mr. Wright. It's set up so you can fast forward, rewind, or pause the video. Just take a good look and be sure to point out the right thing. <clears throat> Please don't play it too many times. I, I can't stand watching this video. How did this guy ever become a police officer in the first place? Now then, Mr. Wright, please enlighten us. <clears throat> Where is the contradiction that indicates the man may not be Detective Goodman? I went a little too far. thing is quite slow. There we go. Okay. There. It's right here. The locker has a light on it. <clears throat> Take that! The thing that's strange about this video has got to be this. Officer Meekins? <clears throat> Sir, do, do you mean me, sir? As I understand it, the locker parent apparatus works like this. <clears throat> when you grab the handle, a sensor reads your fingerprint. If the print matches, the registered data, the light turns on and the lock is released. to my very limited experience, that's the way I understand it, sir. If so, then something is seriously wrong with this picture. <clears throat> the light's already on before he comes. reach for the handle to open the locker. Let's rewind to a little earlier. <clears throat> there, notice the light? What's this? It's already lit! <clears throat> Precisely my point, Your Honor. The locker was already open before the victim grabbed the handle. <clears throat> order, order! What's the meaning of this? It's very simple, Your Honor. The locker wasn't locked on the day of the crime. But the locker locks are controlled by an electronic system. When a door is shut, a sensor is triggered. And the locker is automatically locked. Oh, I know, it must have broken down. Of course, I'm not an expert in this. That's not likely, Your Honor. The sensor would detect and report any malfunction. <clears throat> oh, well, it just goes to show. Novices um, should keep their mouths shut. So then, Mr. Wright, do you have an explanation? Me, Your Honor. <clears throat> yes, why wasn't the locker locked? Me, Your Honor? 
Uh, yes, well, um, you see, this isn't exactly my field. What do you think, Miss Scientific Investigator? <clears throat> huh? Oh, um... Maybe something like jam the electronic system. Something jam the sensor. Hmm. There's something else that seems out of place in this video. Yeah, I thought so too. There's gotta be another clue somewhere in that video. Very well. Let's inspect the video once more. Yeah, we gotta do this like three more times, I think, at least. The locker wasn't locked, Mr. Wright. Please point out the cause for this. <clears throat> falling out of the locker as he opens it. Take that! Please watch closely. This is the continuation of the part I showed you earlier. <clears throat> What's this? Something white fell out of the locker. But sir, it's been my experience that things fall out when doors are opened. I often fall out and roll- <clears throat> We can't be sure that item was in the locker to begin with. What do you mean? The sensor triggers the lock when the door is shut. <clears throat> What if something was inserted, say, between the sensor and the door? In inserted? This white thing wasn't inside the locker. It was stuck between the door and the sensor. I understand now, sir. It's just like my tie. Two out of three times I get stuck in the door when I get out of my patrol vehicle, sir. <clears throat> but the object would have to be extremely thin to fit in the door. Not only that, it would also have to block electrical currents. <clears throat> it would need to be an insulator. Yes, an insulator. But at the crime scene, there just might have been something that fits the description. But, but sir, but insulator, you mean? I think I finally got this figured out. Very well. Will the defense please present the relevant evidence? What was this insulator that was stuck in the locker door? Well, it would be a rubber glove. <clears throat> I found this near the locker. A rub a thin rubber glove. <clears throat> but we can't be sure that was in the victim's locker. It has a tag that says SL9 incident. The video seems to depict the victim opening the lock the locker. But that isn't the case. The lit lamp attests to this. <clears throat> On the day of the crime, even I could have opened that locker. Is this not so, Officer Meekins? Sir! It appears so, sir! <clears throat> order, order, order! So are we to believe, then, that the victim whom this... Witness stabbed in the evidence room was not Detective Goodman? Do not 
Be misled, Your Honor. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? The defense has merely demonstrated that possibility and nothing more. <clears throat> the victim in the video was indeed Bruce Goodman. The prosecution will offer one more testimony to prove this. What? Officer Meekins, please testify about this. Sir? M me, sir? I'm not sure what you're referring to, sir. Is this a joke? Very well, begin your testimony. <clears throat> Mystery man number two. There's one other thing that proves the man was Detective Goodman, sir. To enter the evidence room, one must use their ID card. <clears throat> when ID card is used, there's a record of it. At the time of the crime, the detective had used the, his ID card. An ID card record, I see. I have the ID card record right here, Your Honor. The ID used at 514 is that of the victim. <clears throat> Just before the crime, hmm, yes, without a doubt, this is correct. However, one thing does strike me as unusual. Several hundred cases should have been due for transferal. Why were there so few people using this room? <clears throat> this particular evidence room is only used for storing certain special cases. Special cases? Extremely violent cases involving police staff. <clears throat> Just hearing that makes my hair stand on end. Me too. Although it doesn't make much of a difference. There were only a few cases up for transferal there, and most were cleared up by noon. Right, I see. Now let us move on to the cross-examination. <clears throat> okay, um... The ID card. <clears throat> oh, this shouldn't be too hard. Let's try using the lost item report on this statement here. show that the item lost was his ID card, though. <clears throat> Found at prosecutor's office. Near the scene. Now let's give it a shot. Objection! Yep, that was the right one. <clears throat> Wait one moment, Officer Meekins. victim's ID card right here. I found it at the crime scene. That makes sense. When I say crime scene, I'm not referring to the evidence room at the police department. I mean the other crime scene. The underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. <coughs> Your Honor, I have one more piece of evidence to present. It's a very important clue regarding the victim's ID card. Uh, lost item report? It's only half completed. 
but it shows that Detective Goodman had lost something on the day of the crime. <clears throat> something important enough to fill out this report. Let me guess. You believe this something to be his ID card, right? I can't say for sure, but there is a high probability. <clears throat> On the day of the crime, Detective Goodman was not carrying his card. Order, order. So now, what does this all mean? It can only mean one thing. It doesn't require much thought. The man Officer Meekins encountered in the evidence room was not Detective Goodman but rather the man who stole his ID card. <clears throat> order, order, order! Does the prosecution have a response? I have only one thing to say to the defense. Bravo, Mr. Wright. B bravo Allow me to summarize the defense's argument. At 5.15 p.m. on the day of the crime, the man Officer Meekins encountered <clears throat> in the evidence room was not Detective Goodman. There are two grounds to support this. First, the locker in the evidence room was already opened. Second, the victim lost his ID card. Am I correct so far, Mr. Wright? Yes. What's he up to? That being the case, we must inevitably arrive at a single conclusion. If the victim in the video is a fake, <clears throat> then the murder in the evidence room is also fake. In other words, the security camera does not show the instant of the murder. Uh, th that is, well, I guess that's right. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Only moments ago, you seem content to be pointing your finger around. This isn't good. Well, well. It seems you've finally realized exactly what you've gone to such lengths to prove. Explain yourself, Mr. Edgeworth. <clears throat> the defense has already done the explaining for me. <clears throat> The victim in this video is a fake, which means the murder did not take place. At the police department at 5.15 on the day of the crime. So... So, the real crime could only take place at one location, the underground parking lot. At the prosecutor's office. The murderer being Miss Lana Sky, the defendant. The evidence is compelling. A trustworthy witness. Observe the moment the defendant used the murder weapon. Ah! He's got me now. Oh no. What do we do? I knew that testimony was way too shabby. It was all a trap from the beginning. The activity in the evidence room still leaves many questions unanswered. Who exactly was the victim Officer Meekins encountered? <clears throat> and when did this person where did this person disappear to? However, this trial's purpose is to examine only the murder of Detective Goodman. Just so, Your Honor. Mr. Wright. You have to do something, or my sister. What do I do now? How am I supposed to get myself out of this one? Object. One moment, Your Honor. What now, Mr. Wright? <clears throat> Don't tell me you're objecting to what you've just proven. Of course not. But I almost walked right into the prosecution's trap. What are you talking about? This cross-examination has proven one thing and one thing only. The security video did not show the actual murder. Oh, the 
this video is so slow. Ah, there it goes. <clears throat> now it's done. However, it cannot be said that it is unrelated to the murder in the parking lot. Specifically, large amounts of blood traces were found in the evidence room. <clears throat> the defense demands further examination into the truth of the matter. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. If this court were to examine this further, other witnesses will be necessary. Is the prosecution prepared? I'm sorry, Your Honor. <clears throat> the prosecution considered the incident at the police department to be unrelated. We have not prepared any other witnesses for this incident. <clears throat> This just might be my chance. Time to call a certain Texas Ranger to the stand. Mr. Wright, do you mean... Your Honor. The defense would like to request a specific witness. Oh, whom do you have in mind? Someone we have reason to believe knows the truth. The truth behind the activities that took place in the evidence room. The prosecution requests to hear this person's name before deciding whether or not to comply. <clears throat> Very well then, Mr. Wright. This person whom you would have testify, what is his or her name? Jake Marshall. Take that! Officer Jake Marshall. Why him? can't let him know everything just yet. He's in charge of the evidence room. I feel we should hear what he has to say. The prosecution agrees to the defense's request. Since he was responsible for guarding the room, we should hear his testimony. Fortunately, he works in the police department. <clears throat> we shouldn't need longer than 20 minutes to prepare. Very well. The court will take a 30-minute recess while the witness is subpoenaed. Will the prosecution please prepare the witness during this time? We will, Your Honor. Court in, is now in recess. <clears throat> February 24th, 11.32 a.m. Defendant Lobby Number 2. There's no stopping you in there, Mr. Wright. Huh? What do you mean? You called for Jake Marshall. It seems you've figured everything out. Uh... I haven't figured anything out. Lana! You're the one who knows everything. Emma! You always know everything. Why won't you just tell us? Mr. Wright is trying to his hardest to protect you. I... I don't recall ever asking for his protection. How can you be so cold? Don't you trust us? Don't you trust me? Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Oh, yes I am. I'll come back later. Oh, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? <clears throat> You've got a lot of nerve, pal. Maybe a detective run all around while on duty? And to top it all off, you call me here? I've seen half of your people in funerals. Sorry, detective. You better be, pal. Hey! Hey! I didn't see you there, miss. Sky? That's okay. So, have you brought what I asked? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, you mean this, right? My apologies, detective. Due to my present circumstances, I was forced to use Mr. Wright's name when making my request. My name? 
never in a million years would I have thought it was you who asked me. Could I bother you to bring me the Ethel 9 incident files? I'll need them by noon. Talk about crazy. The Ethel 9 incident? But Lana, that's... I thought Mr. Wright might need them, so I had them brought here. Here, you might do well to read them. I can't believe you! The Chief Prosecutor? Were a witness in that case! <clears throat> Miss Skye was a witness? Receive the SL9 incident files. Take it from me! You don't want anything to do with serial murders! Oh, what? Now that I've brought you your stuff, you're just gonna ignore me? <clears throat> uh, Emma, but why? Why is your name in here? What? M my name's in there? Uh, I don't know. Unless... <clears throat> no, it, it couldn't be. Lana, this... S9 incident... Is that... That's the classification number the police filed it under. Two years ago... <clears throat> the rest of the world knew it as the Joe Dark killings. The Joe Dark? No, Lana! That's over with! No! Emma, wait! She ran away. Uh, you know what? I just remembered. I gotta be somewhere. Sorry, pal, but I'm out of here. <clears throat> Jake Marshall, Angel Star, Damon Gaunt, Miles Edgeworth. Not to mention Lana and Emma. Everyone involved in this case is connected to those killings two years ago. This can't be just a coincidence. Knowing you, you just might be able to figure it out. Time to get back to the trial, Mr. Wright. Best of luck. I'd better take a good look at this file. And, uh, that is it for now. To be continued. Uh, this is such a long case. Uh, so yeah, we're finished with the first half of day two of the trial. Next time we will continue with the second half of this part of the trial. I'm your host, Kaylee Huatari. Please like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think, if you have any questions. Also, please suggest a, uh, a the game that you'd like to see me do next. Any of the DS games will do. And um, next time, we'll continue the trial.